Hey guys, welcome to Band Advice TV. What's How's going it going? Yo? What's going on? I am your co-host Mark Allen V, and this is my friend Matt Mason. How y'all doing? I'm a partner in crime. What's up, man? Not much, not much. Just uh, getting back into the swing of things. You look so good with your shades. I decided to do the same myself. Well, these lights we got yes. here are quite blinding. We were stepping it up a little bit. I got some nice uh, studio lights going on here. Trying to have a backdrop. Uh, unfortunately, it still kind of looks like a, an ultrasound, but you know, whatever. You know, <laughs> yeah. it, it's it's better than the mess the rest of this room has turned into. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nice. You get your little man cave, and all of a sudden, your little man cave studio ends up being storage for other things. And hey, it's life of. Life of being a family man and a rock and roller, right? Yep, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. Speaking of family man, isn't isn't Zach Wild a family man? He is. He's got like I think I think he's been married to Barbara Ann. They were they were uh, I think they went out for the first time in the sixth grade. Wow, he's been with her ever since. Oh, uh, the the whole dating. My kids do that too. My my one daughter's in fourth grade. Uh, or no, she's in fifth grade. And the other one's in seventh. Grade. Oh, so and so's dating. So it's like you guys aren't dating. You're walking down the hall, maybe holding hands, but you can't do the PDA. So what dates are you guys going on? I'm the one driving you everywhere. You ain't dating. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, it's hilarious. Two, All right. So anyway, two, with two girls, I guarantee you're going to have your hands full. Well, but... that's why that's why having old friends like you around because <laughs> those first dates <laughs> you know, you between just... the two of us with the, the, the hat and the sunglasses sitting on the front porch. Mm. Well, you ought to just get oh, you a young man. Just get you a little shotgun. Just be cleaning it. When he you comes know, up. I don't even think I need that. Though. <laughs> I don't need that. So you know, I, th I think just the two of us was enough to scare any of these little Post millennial children's. Yeah, yeah so, uh, so Zach, <laughs> anyway, back to Zach. Zach's a family man. He's got a wife and four kids, I think. But what really is cool is this album right here came out 25 years ago. Wow. 25 years no, ago. No, you must be losing your mind. This album was released, <laughs> right? This album was released on an unsuspecting uns uh, public. Now, this was his first solo thing mm -hmm. post Ozzy. You know, timeline for you. No more tears was like uh, the second. You know, no rest for the wicked. He that was his first album. Well, really the post it's like right in the middle of Ozzy, but it's since he joined Ozzy, right? Yeah, I mean, and then there, this was like kind of the first break that he right. took from. You know, because it, it was like his thing. Yeah, he did no more tears, and then he did this in '94, and 94. so did this, <laughs> and uh, it's well, what's the name of it? It's called Pride and Glory. All right, because our listeners aren't going to Pride and Glory. Pride and Glory. Everybody knows the BLS stuff, but this is Pride and Glory. Yeah. This is the real meat and potatoes was, right here. I wore so, that cassette out. So what I've got here is this is a reissue of the album. Uh, gatefold, picture disc. It's got some bonus tracks you can download. Wait, wait, now, that, wait, wait. those bonus album. tracks were well, on that's, the... That's uh, awful large CD. Why yeah, don't you right. explain what an album it's is? It's an LP, a 12-inch LP. LP. Yeah, vinyl's all the rage Vinyl. Now. Oh, my mm -hmm. gosh. But he's also he's offering that's the... like Spotify uh, to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's offering these five bonus tracks that were on the, the Spitfire Records release of this. You know, it's nice. like Torn and Tattered, Hammer and the Nail, The Wizard, uh, Come Together... In my time of dying, you know, some cover tunes. But I'm real excited to have this because we saw this show at Kansas Yes, we Ball, did. Remember we that? did. I think I bought that for your birthday or something. Got your tickets to that, didn't I? I think it was like you get a get in with a can of food. Was it? Yeah, it was like yeah, a food drive really? deal. No. I don't know. I took you to some concert for your birthday. Yeah. Though, so. anyway. Yeah. So anyway, this was 25 years ago this came out. And it's still in a shrink wrap. Yeah. Right? So I got this. that They, they just reissued it. And so I'm really uh, happy to get it. And uh, I had a version of this on green vinyl that I got on eBay. It was a Spitfire release, but it just never sounded very good. I don't know that this is going to sound all that good on a picture disc format either. But, but Spitfire is an indie label? T tell us about Spitfire. Spitfire, I think, was, uh, you know, he he licensed like those first four albums or something to this Spitfire Records that started distributing him. I'm not sure exactly... So was it like that. a self-produced thing? He went and financed the Well, the I mean, Pride and Glory or... originally came out on Geffen. Geffen. Because oh, he was right. on Geffen yeah. for Pride and Glory and Book of Shadows. And, you know, that was in the days where if you if you sold 500,000 copies, you were still going to probably get dropped. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, so yeah, uh, that, that I don't was know. He platinum picked, stuff, picked yeah. up his option, whatever the business arrangement was. But anyway, so uh, they're celebrating this 25th 
anniversary of this with an LP release, and I'm just like, man, it's just been always one of my all time favorite albums, you know. So okay, so if Geffen owned the masters, how did he get the masters? I guess he bought the masters back. Well, huh? you know, you gotta think he's got Sharon Osbourne working behind for him, you know. Enough said. She's probably said. Pull, she's probably able to help him pull some strings to <laughs> exactly. own his masters or whatever. Yeah. Well, I don't know that for a fact, but I would just, if I had a gut feeling, that would be Well, if the record stops selling, it would make sense for a major label to sell the masters. Now, for you guys that don't quite understand how that worked, you know, you got the songwriter who writes the songs, you got the record company that then pays to record the stuff, so the, the stuff they record is called the masters, and they own what's called the sound recording copyright, where the songwriter owns the actual composition, they own the sound recording, and it's two different copyrights, two different ownership, stuff like that. So what happens, I know it's kind of long-winded right now, but the record company will then actually license the rights to record to create a mechanical license of that song from the songwriters. Now, the songwriters still get their mechanical royalties because they're licensing it, but the record company owns the masters, so you can't reproduce that record. So we move forward. Song's not selling. The record's not selling anymore. He decides that he wants those original masters he has the right to go negotiate with them, you know. And I'm it makes sure. sense for those major labels. I'm not if sure it... what label this is even on. I mean, I think he's got his own label nowadays. Well, I knew Arlo Guthrie. This is was going Wild to... Recordings. Okay. LLC. So, so he somehow financed the the rights to purchase the masters back from from the record label. Now there's there's one other caveat a lot of times in cop in E1. contracts. It's maybe licensed to E one. Mm -hmm. I don't know. A lot of times when you uh when you sign a, a recording contract, they'll say that you can't re-record it for 20 years. So you can't make your own masters after that. And once that 20 years is up, but it looks like in this case, he somehow purchased or somebody came in and negotiated mm -hmm. the right to buy the masters back. Mm -hmm. I know Arlo Guthrie had done that. And a lot of people will try to get their masters back. And because uh, that's, you know, owning the masters these days, especially with the catalog and the internet and all that kind of stuff. You, well, it, especially you like in the there. in the wake of that fire that they had oh out there, Universal. That yeah. I don't understand why it's just not come to light. What's happened there? I'm I'm just it's baffling to me that I mean I saw a list of like potential artists whose master recordings were affected by that fire, and it's just amazing. <sighs> And it scares me because how many other things are out there? You know, you were talking as we were driving down to Austin a couple of weeks ago. You were talking about that that guy that had all those blues records and stuff, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And it's like, man, we need to get in there and somehow digitally capture those things. Mm -hmm. Well, even though my parents and all their records, so it's like, I'm sure some of those record companies that produce those records aren't existent anymore. Oh, no. So there, there's the possibility of actually capturing some of those masters yeah, man, and, just, and at least preserving it for for historical purposes right you know? on and you know the having those master recordings disappear i mean Ugh. you know when they reissue these recordings it's like a lot of times they you know there was two or three bonus songs that didn't make the original mm -hmm. album there's some chit chat in between there's some funny stuff i mean that's what us as fans like to right. hear and th to think that that possibly has been affected by this huge fire that was kept under wraps for many right, years right. that's just this kind of goes to show you it's like man you gotta own those masters you gotta yeah. you gotta keep control yeah. of that yeah yeah definitely it's because you know back in the day too especially when the recording you start on a tape multi-track tape and then you do the mix down and mm -hmm. the analog analog and then usually the phonographs, so three analogs or the cassette tape. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's the way it was back with those things. So if you don't have that, those master multiple tracks, and I'm sure some of those multi-tracks may not be around anymore, but at least the master mix down, you know, that, yeah. that, that, that second E in the AAA part. Right, of it, you right. Know? They, they, at least maybe they have the stereo mix down. Right. It, but that's not to say that some of the stuff that didn't make the album isn't still on those well, master recordings I mean, that got lost. And right, because you always have pages those... and... You know, there's just no telling what the condition of it was. But I, I felt really kind of like, wow, they didn't even mm. tell anybody about this for years. It was a big fire on the Universal lot. Yeah, you know? yeah. And uh, it's just like we'll some see. of the names that got affected, uh, supposedly, is pretty big names, you know. I mean, it's just pretty amazing. But but the thing is, they owned it. They don't really have to tell. But from connoisseurs of music like we are, it's like, okay, you may own the tape, but to us, it's our music. We own the music. Yeah, man. Not necessarily an aspect that we could profit from, but these are songs that we grew up with. These are things that are part of our lives. And just to say, well, you know, 
Big deal. No, it is a big deal. Yeah. So you know, you know why when... can't ever go back and, and find some of these songs from this band that was supposed to be in that album? Yeah. Because every... you guys. Uh, and you know, yeah. maybe like every every so many years when they reissue these records, it's nice to freshen up your copy with like some new bonus stuff, some mm-hmm. different things that maybe sure. didn't exist on the original. So yeah. That's kind of a tragedy, but I'm happy to see this Pride and Glory yeah, coming back that's out. That's great. I mean, Zach's just really done well. He's thrived, you know, and mm-hmm. I mean, you got to hand it to him. Even if you don't like his music, if you don't like his guitar playing, he's he's been really successful at a lot of things, a lot of levels. Yeah, he has. He really has. And, you know, he's he's a funny dude. He, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I've, I've just been watching him, you know, his business acumen and just the way he sells himself and the way he carries himself. It's He's, mm-hmm. he's doing really pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's definitely developing his, his fan base of the super fans. Man, and, uh, I'm telling you, every, yeah. like a lot of these other people are, they're starving. He's thriving, man. And so, yeah. what's the difference? I'm always checking out what he's doing, and he does it all with a good slice of comedy too. Well, you I know, love I, it. That's he doesn't take himself too serious. You know, man. that's the thing, though. It's, you know, is one of the things as we're talking about these YouTube channels and stuff, we're trying to go. It's like. You gotta have fun doing it. Yeah, you know, you sit there and say, you know, act like a, a college professor. Well, this is the way you should do it. As you're copywriting your material, who wants to watch that? Right. It's, a, it's it's as much entertainment as it is knowledge. And yeah, man, you know, we're certainly having a good time doing it. Heck yeah! You know, thanks to thanks to a little <laughs> oil fire whiskey. Anyway, <laughs> shameless self promotion. Not self promotion. Was just saying. Anyway, shameless promotion. Yes, but you know it's. So that's that's really I mean we keep talking about this episode an episode of it's like working you're you're a content creator you're doing the Instagram you're doing this and you're mm-hmm. having a good time and you want to keep people engaged well people want to feel good when they see your stuff so mm-hmm. if you're you're posting funny things and and just being silly and goofy and showing the you know lighthearted side of you it's like absolutely you know sure why not man yeah. it's 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 a fun it's fun to follow absolutely it, his trail you know I nobody mean, wants to follow eeyore through the gloomy day you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously no i'd seriously. hope i'd hope that we could get a pride and glory tour out of this reissue of 25 years later that you would know, be kind of cool if he did you know kind of did that whole it would be we're gonna awesome. play the album in its entirety kind awesome. of concert right you know but i don't know i don't know like because james lomenzo pride and glory started out as as leonard skinhead so it was like when ozzy had White Lion out opening for Ozzy. He got to know Those Greg guys. D'Angelo, the drummer, you know, the curly haired drummer, <laughs> and then the bass player, James Lomenzo. Right. So on the days off, they'd go out and they'd jam in LA and play, you know, Tush and Little Wing and, you know, Skinner to Almonds, stuff like that. And uh-huh. it was like, wow, this is good. So let's do an album. And man, I'm telling you what, it's just, you know, it's the right combination of the heaviness, mm-hmm. awesome guitar. You know, he plays banjo, he plays mandolin, he plays harmonica. I mean, it's like Blackfoot meets the Almonds meets Black Sabbath, you know, just and he's right got a killer beard, too. I mean, yeah. I, I got beard envy when it comes to Zag. I'm just yeah, saying. man. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I don't know if he'd ever get together with those guys again, you know, and play with them. But I think by the time I saw him, I'm trying to remember if, if James Lomenzo was playing with him. I think he might have had JD on the bass when I saw that Pride and Glory, when we saw that hmm. show little you know the guy that's playing with him now okay they've been friends since they were kids you know so i'm just really uh, stoked up about it nice I'd nice take a little trip down memory lane we went to that show it was on my birthday uh-huh. J- november 28th 1994 holy cow <laughs> thanks for making me feel real old <laughs> what birthday would that have been for you sir <laughs> Uh, let's see. I think I was about fourteen. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> so, uh, so it's still shrink wrapped. Yeah. What's what's the what's the grand plan? For well, this the show? grand plan is, man, I'm gonna like wait till my birthday this year, which is on I Thanksgiving. I see a theme going on here. Yes. Yeah, it's on Thanksgiving this year, and so I'm gonna crack that open, uh, crack open a little sip of something good, and I'm gonna so crack that one, album open five. and put it on the turntable and just see what it sounds like nice you know i've got how many versions of cd i've got the radio promos i've got all kinds of stuff you know just the the vinyl i just think that cracking this open on my birthday putting it on the turntable letting it spin you know because i try to celebrate my birthday like for a week sure you know and it's not like mad ass crazy party in the whole week it's like okay i like to go see a band play okay a friend's band play right i like to go to some kind of concert I like to, uh, you know, get me a buffalo ribeye and smoke that. Oh, yeah. I like to buy me something, you know, like. Something pretty? Yeah, something cool, <laughs> you know. Um, 
I like to visit with some friends, you know, just have a good week of it, you know. Mm -hmm. This is this is going to be one of my little activities for the week of my birthday. Nice, nice. And then we got to plan mine for next uh, June because it's the big one. Uh, yeah, the big one. Oh, the there's big, a, there's an O after the big three O. Huh? Yes, yes, we're going to go with that. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> big three O. <laughs> anyway, I'm still, great. I'm still 26. I'm yes, here. yes, absolutely. <laughs> 26 going on 14, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that right. Oh, well, that's all good. Well, that's cool. So, Pride and Glory album. All right. What what other albums are you excited about? I know we talked about Black Crows. What else? What's what's on your radar that you're looking forward to happening in the next? four or five months man they've been talking about this gnr thing and i'd just love to know what's going on with that are they talking about going to the studio i think they've already been in the studio oh, really? okay. you know and they've just been slaying it on the road for the last two and some years <sighs> and it's like i'm telling you i was not expecting much when i went and saw those shows a couple years yeah. ago i was really amazed i was well, really good. impressed it was something else they said i think like, i shied away from it because i wasn't quite sure because anyway, i saw them back in the use your illusion days and it's like it was pretty awesome but you know I was so far away at Texas Stadium. I might as well have been in Ardmore. <laughs> I saw the OKC is actually behind the stage, so it was a pretty good scene. But, uh, man, I was really, cool. I really was surprised at how good they sounded, and you know they played all kinds of songs, and the production was over the top, and everybody sounded great, you know. And I, I just, I, I wonder if they're going to do something because I've been hearing all these rumors for how long, you know. <laughs> Where's Izzy though? Why isn't he back with us? Well, I think that Izzy just decided he just didn't like that lifestyle anymore, you yeah. know? And you can't say as a blame him, man. It's like, you know, it's full tilt, man. Yeah, that's it's true. full tilt. That's true. And, I, you know, I mean, just like, uh, to each their own. Yeah. But the same jerk-offs would say, oh, no no Guns N' Roses unless there's Izzy. And I'm like, hey, Izzy was a big part of the band. Absolutely. He, Izzy doesn't want to be in the band anymore. What are yeah. you going to do? Yeah, well, he had... I think that's the thing a lot of people don't realize. Everyone's like, oh, slash, slash. No, is he? He was, he's the very, very driving force behind the mm -hmm. sound there. I mean, yeah, he just, him and his rhythms and, and yeah, he may not have shredded the solos, but man, he had some riffs in there. Yeah. That was, he's kind of the riff master. Him and, Ask, him and Axel were friends back in Indiana too. Yeah. So they yeah. had this strange relationship of knowing each other back when, you know? <laughs> so I don't know exactly all the details it all kind of yeah, escapes me yeah. you know now but like i said they're back out there and they're doing it again and i'm like man yeah, that's that's cool though. give us something else you know and not a thousand dollar box set i never thought i never thought that i would see slash and, and axel back together again because you know after the chinese democracy came out and i guess slash tried to go see the band and they they refused him access oh really <laughs> you know, wow yeah axel's like do not let him in here it's like well you know how many guys with top hats are trying to walk in? It's pretty easy to get rid of. Right. <laughs> well, but I'm glad that they, they, they seem to patch it up. And they were looking at the greater good that they, there's something magical there. And yes, sometimes you just got to you suck it up and you just make it happen. You know? Yeah. Well, you know? I mean. You get past that crap. It's just like, huh? okay, everybody says, oh, it's a money grab. Well, hell yeah, it's a money grab. You know, I mean, it's... they built a legacy on a, a band that sold a lot of records, made a lot of people happy. Far be it from any of us to criticize them capitalizing right. on it. If right. you don't like it, change the channel. Exactly. Simple. Simple yeah. as that. Of course, but they're I... saying it's a money grab on their iPhone as they're <laughs> posting this on Facebook. It's like, those are all money grabs. Look, yeah. we all want to do things that are going to employ us so that we can continue to do the things that we enjoy. Right. Simple. Right? Why not? Why not profit from the things you love? Now, I mean, you if, if you're sitting there and you're just writing stupid songs that you never want to play yourself for the purpose of making money, that's, well, to each is their own, though. Really, mm -hmm. honestly, to each is their yeah. own. Somebody that's a professional songwriter, hey, more power to you because I wish exactly. I could do it myself. Exactly. So you got you got to just go with what you love and, and just decide how you want to do it. So, I mean, they've written some of the most endear enduring music for the last 20 or 30 years. And it's yeah. just like yeah. undeniable. They're head and shoulders above lots of these other rock bands. With only a couple of albums, really, <laughs> they did yeah. it in just a couple of albums. Yeah, I mean, the 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 you know, I'd say I'd give it to them. Like they had, they had four albums, right? One of which was a double, All right? And you can't really count Chinese Democracy. No, no, because no, that no, wasn't no. really a Guns N' Roses. That no. was the Axel. That was Soto. Axel's. But I tell you, when spaghetti I think, incident. When they did play some of those songs off of the off the uh, Chinese Democracy live, I, I really enjoyed them. They're yeah. they really good. You know, and that Richard Fortas they got sitting in for Izzy is freaking mm. he's just really good cool really good cool. so i'm excited about what what's that gonna happen with them we'll see but keep your little ears peeled yeah that. yeah you know it's it's cool <laughs> it's just 
I really, it's just cool, you know. I never thought we'd, we'd be sitting here all these years later and they're out there touring and playing again. Your flyer that introduced us is, do you like GNR and, yeah, and all right. these other bands? I'm like, yeah. 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 You know, in 92, it's right. like, look at us now. We're a little, little bit older. <laughs> At least five minutes older. Right, right, right. Some of the little less like... hair, but that's just because we got haircuts. Yeah. Right. And uh, they're still doing it. We're still doing it. Mm-hmm. Rock on. Awesome. Toast. All right. Let's let's have a little toast. Let's All right. A little Ein schnook of something. So here's we got a local brand. This is oil fire whiskey. Nice. It's rye whiskey with a little hint of vanilla, maybe a little cinnamon. Yeah. Real nice. Get the, awesome. I'm empty. Oh, you're empty. Oh, okay. Let's on, see. Man. Let me put this down and we'll pour you up one. All right, for, this is not a money grab because I'm not getting paid other than this. So, <laughs> yeah, for us. Salud. Salud. All right, great way to end up another great podcast. Hey, I'm Mark Allen V, and this is Mr. Matt Mason. We Keep are on rocking in the free world, right? And we are madeadvice.tv. Matt and Mark's about music podcast. You can check us out on YouTube. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify. Google Play, the, the audio on the podcast is out there. You can even go to bandadvice.com and find some links on there. So until next time, peace. See you later. <laughs>